Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to talk about the newly released Endeavor Concept Sale and try and give you all an idea, or give you some guidance on who this might be the right ship for. Now, this is going to be a fairly complicated video to make, seeing that we just got a bunch of modules to provide diversity to a ship that is already pretty inherently very interesting. So I'm going to try and strike that balance of efficient and informational, but we'll see, I tend to get a little bit long-winded. So let's go ahead and start simple and say that this is a concept sale that's running through October 10th and will give you LTI on whichever Endeavor hold that you get and the modules that you choose, um, as well as some hangar flare. Now as far as the cost goes, we start seeing things get a little bit more complicated because there's three different default sets that you can pick up or you can end up getting a base hole and selecting the modules that work best for you. I guess in a third approach, you can get whatever special variant you want and end up getting the pods or different modules that you feel like you may be missing. So let's go ahead and talk about the ship a little bit and we'll start adding in prices and specifics as we go. So the Endeavor is a surprisingly large ship. It comes in at 200 meters long, which puts it somewhere between the Idris and the Orion in length. Now, that being said, the ship is fairly low on mass, so while it may not be a lumbering beast like we might expect from some of the other ships, I'm still not guessing this is going to be any like speed racer or nimble machine. Now, we have a pretty interesting ship here, though, in that it really is broken down into three primary components. Up front is, like, the cockpit is what we call the explorer cab. And one of the challenges the design team was faced with was finding a way to make a ship that is capable of doing like delicate research work, but also tough enough to get to the extremes um, where you want to study. You know, that's where the most interesting things are probably happening. So I would have assumed that they would have taken the approach that we've seen with other larger ships and had a snub nose that could maybe do the job. But the Endeavor almost takes like the Starship Enterprise approach, having the ability to separate the front of the ship to go do what's needed. Now, the Explorer Cab, as they're calling it, is heavily armored and operates under its own control. Now, you can see in some of these pictures that it's got its own engines, which not only help maneuver the sep when it's separated from the rest of the ship, they're also critical in the normal operating of the ship and its ability to maneuver the craft. Basically, the rest of the ship cannot move unless you connect the three parts. Now, it's designed to resist some meteorite damage, as well as to be able to get what they call dangerously close to the star's corona. Basically, this thing sounds like it's pretty well protected, and it's going to allow you to science the shit out of stuff. Now, the cab has everything you would need in a ship, with the exception of a jump drive. So, be careful that while you're out studying the origins of the universe, that you aren't leaving the rest of your ship in a dangerous area, or you may end up coming back and finding out the rest of your ship was gone, and you need to call Space AAA for a tow back, since you won't have your jump capabilities. Now, the cab is interesting, though, and it does provide a potential cool dynamic of a pseudo-escape ship, too, if things get really hairy, assuming that the armor is proficient in protecting from weapons, which I kind of assume it will, since meteorites are kind of like ballistics, and the energy from the stars could be kind of like energy weapons. Now, I'm going to skip over the second stage of the ship for a second, because that's where we're going to end up spending the most of this video, and jump to the back, or the third portion of the ship, and talk about the drive unit. And the drive unit is what's providing the ship with its critical power and propulsion um, that this big gal is going to need to do her job. Now the Endeavor comes with a capital class power plant and main thrusters at the back of the ship to help her move her where she needs to go. Um, this drive unit also supplies the power to the middle of the ship, which is the whole reason you have the ship. So now that we've gotten the front and back out of the way, let's talk about the middle, otherwise known as the workshop. CNGs went ahead and called the middle of the ship the meat and potatoes of the whole craft. Like, we're starting to see with other ships, modularity is back, but in this instance, we're working with the nomenclature of pods. I was pleasantly surprised to see that a variety that they put into these um, right from the beginning, allowing you to do a variety of things out in space. The options that you have available for with these pods come in a total of six slots arranged in a two-wide, three-deep formation. That being said, the notes on the release document um, about the pods say they're limited to being in symmetrical formations to help with the thrusters being aligned and working efficiently. Um, and you can also be limited on the amount and the types of these modules that can be installed. So I would assume that these limits are in, in place based on a couple of factors ranging from size or shape or power consumption or just anything along those lines. And a good example would be the telescope array. Now, the telescope allows you to be basically a mobile observatory gathering information from deep space, which then you can use to plot new journeys, find new jump points, or maybe just sell all of this for a profit when you get back to wherever the hell you're going. Now, the telescope array is big, it's cumbersome, and it flips up to deploy for use. So if you could imagine having two in a row, the first one is going to block the second one from even functioning, so there's no point in allowing for two of those to be lined up. So it kind of makes sense that you're limited to one pod. 
Now the telescope array goes for $125, and since this falls into the exploration category, let's go ahead and talk about the next pod that I feel fits this bill, and that would be the landing bay. Now, this is another pod that you can only use one of, and if I had to guess, I would say this is more of a gameplay decision to really kind of prevent you from creating a pocket carrier. The landing bay is a really neat addition, and it takes up two total slots and adds a large hangar underneath the ship. Now, the description goes on to say that it's intended to support hospital operations, and we've known that it was going to have the ability to dock a Cutlass Red running ambulance duties. What we didn't know was the size, and Ben went on to say that he thinks it's going to end up being able to hold two Cutlass Reds. Now, I know that I'm discussing medical stuff, and I'll get to more of that later, but the reason I mention it now is that I think because it would be an interesting addition for those in an explorer role. You know, the Endeavor could be an end-of-the-line um, exploration ship, you know, not only based on its own abilities, but because I feel like it can support other operations pretty well. You know, using the landing bay for 315s or heralds to come in and drop off their information before heading back out to search for a new sector, it just sounds really versatile. And I would love more information on this pod, but they also state that it can support the upkeep of any sufficiently small spacecraft, so I think of refueling or minor repairs or those sorts of things. There are a lot of options associated with this pod, and I think that's why I'm so excited by it, and it's actually a little bit cheaper than I expected it to be when comparing it to other pods coming in at $75. Since exploration is bound to involve some level of science, let's go ahead and jump into some you know, scientific options that we have available through the different pods. Now, there's a lot of different options available that sort of fall into the science realm, and they kind of really vary from the totally legal and ethical to the totally underground, or at least we assume that's what it's going to be used for. The first one I'm going to talk about is the big boy, and that's the super collider. Now, this ring of sort, it kind of encompasses the middle of the ship, and it's certainly interesting looking, almost giving that iconic sci-fi look to the ship, almost like a gravity circle. Um, you know, the overall purpose of the super collider, though, is to push things to their max. Um, you want some thrusters that can be more efficient, or weapons that are overcharged, or maybe a sensor array that can pick up targets at a further distance. Um, the workbenches and the labs on this pod are a great place to make that happen, and according to the description, by using the accelerator to work with atomic precision, you could make that happen. What that means for gameplay and how you do this, I have no idea. But the basic purpose is to push the limits and raise performance on everything we use in-game. So the collider is going to take up a total of four spaces in a 2x2 configuration and cost $125. Now there's other science-y operations like the general um, you know, research pod, which is a versatile little facility allowing you to work on um, you know, like microscope, uh, or microscopes and stuff like that, zero-g experiments and biological studies. Now, I think it's kind of funny to think about zero-g experiments when you could just turn off the gravity in the ship, um, but I guess it's about uh, control when you talk about science, and keeping power to the rest of your ship is probably pretty important. Now, basically, you're using the scanners to analyze things and to help catalog your discoveries. Now, my favorite part of the description of this pod is the quote at the end. Um, the GRP is intended for legal experimentation as authorized by the UEE only. Now, I think we can all read between the lines and say, if you're looking to mix some compounds together to create some space drugs, then this may be the best option for you. Now, up next is the general science pod, which is essentially the brain of a discovery science type ship. It has an installation point for uh, data banks, computers, and is more focused on processing data that you've gathered elsewhere. So basically, if you want to sell the data that your telescope found, you're probably going to want one of these on board. Now, both the science and the research pods take up two slots and cost a total of $45 a piece. After that, we kind of run into what I would consider more general purpose pods, including the service equipment and crew pod, which takes up two slots. This pod's going to allow for crew facilities or more crew uh, facilities and just allow you to have more crew in general, um, as well as kind of allowing the workshop to function in a standalone capacity and cost $25, which makes it the cheapest module. The next one is a fuel pod, which takes up two spaces as well, and not surprisingly, it holds fuel. It is interesting to see, though, that it's also called the standard cargo pod, and if that's the case, then I could see this being worthwhile if you're bringing your findings back to your ship, or maybe if you are producing drugs and this turns into some form of storage compartment, you could then put your drugs in there to, until you could get them sold. Either way, if you plan on using this as a hub of operations for a long-distance exploration fleet, then bringing the extra fuel along obviously makes sense. The cost of the fuel pond is $35. Now, I think what we've all expected to this point with this ship was to see it as more of a hospital, but we've mostly been talking about science so far. So to get back on track with the medical side of this ship, there's the medical bay taking up four total slots. 
Now, this pod is made up of several different hospital settings, um, you know, like you would expect with operating rooms and recovery rooms. Um, I'm hoping these are also going to come with uh, robotic surgeons because I'm fairly certain I'm not qualified to perform anything but maybe an amputation. Um, the basic purpose of this pod, though, is to help heal those that have been shuttled in on a cutlass red, um, you know, from battles or maybe natural disasters. So this can end up being a ship that's more of a force multiplier if you're talking about long battles to get people back into the fight, or it could just be purely a humanitarian ship during bad times. From a gameplay perspective, the medical module is going to allow players to get back into the fight quicker, but this does come with a little bit of tact. The player respawning will have to choose the endeavor they want to join, and they're going to have different prices that are going to be set by the captain of the ship. Now, the endeavor takes on a cost to this process as well, um, and there's some financial planning that's going to need to go on to this, um, because there's also options for you to actually be able to jump into a small ship that may be docked there for you to take at that point. Now, the medical pod is going to cost $75, and I think opens up a lot of possibilities for just gameplay as a whole for big fleets and for just anybody that happens to be around one when they die. Now, the final pod on the list that we've yet to discuss is the Biodome pod, and that focuses on farming in space. Now, this was the first one, or the first time that I've really heard about the farming aspect of this game, so it did. It caught me a little bit off guard, but I suppose for the overall depth of play options, it's an interesting thought. Now, what does this pod do? Exactly what you'd expect it to do. You grow food or plants in it. Now, luckily, it sounds like growing this and doing this kind of career, it's going to be fairly involved, and it's not going to just be some endless cycle of plant, pluck, sell, or plant, pluck, eat, um, and then try and get a profit. You know, you're going to need to put in labor and brain power to figure out which species need um, what to survive and how you can actually make them thrive. Now, I personally can't envision this being a real moneymaker um, or just really being a huge productive farmer, um, but they go on to say that you can make a solid living on it. Now, here's my thing with it is I just looking at the scale of the ship and seeing the size of the pods, it just doesn't seem like there's enough space to grow enough of the product to make a huge profit. You know, now granted, it is the future, so maybe we can speed along the process. Maybe. Maybe then it's a good profit margin. Um, but I don't know. To me, it just seems like when you compare this floating ship as compared to, uh, you know, like a farm on a planet, just the scale makes all the difference in the world. Now, if we're talking about rare or expensive plants that you're going to sell or maybe some illegal stuff... Um, if that requires special radiation from certain nebulas, then yeah, I can see that making sense. Now, I think this makes more sense though for a, like a, to support a fleet that doesn't want to have to stop to get food, or maybe just to grow some space weed to sell on the black market. All that being said though, you could put a focus on growing more lucrative and rare species that's going to require more expensive soils and more expensive fertilizers um, to then increase your profit margin, but it sounds like that's going to come with an increased cost. Now the biodome takes up two slots and you can max out at two per ship, so four slots total and each of these pairs comes at uh, $100 a piece. So that basically covers the different pods that are available, um, all of which provide a variety of customization that should cover most people's needs. Now with that in mind, there's four different buying options for people right now. And the first is just to buy the base Endeavor hole for $350. Now keep in mind that with this ship, you're not getting any of the modules. You're also going to need to buy the pods that fit your need. Now, next is the Discovery Class Endeavor for $425, and this version comes with a general research lab, a general science lab, and the crew and service module. Next up is the Hope Class, which is a, the dedicated hospital variant for $450 and comes with the landing bay as well as the medical bay. And then finally, we've got the Olympic Class for $500, and it comes with two sets of biodomes. Now, there is one more option available, and that's the Master Set for $900, and that basically gives you the whole um, and one of each pod that's currently available. Now, for me, the only one out, that's out of the box that I would personally consider right as is would probably be the uh, Hope, as I think it gives you exactly what you need for your medical operations. And since I'm not personally sold on space farming yet, but... Hell, if you are, it's the only ship right now that does it, so it's kind of hard to really argue with that one. For me, I think I've got a few builds that I would suggest, or at least think that would be fun and have a good purpose. And the first one I can think of would be like as the center of an exploration fleet. And I would have a landing pad um, for the 315s and the Heralds um, come in, drop off the information to be processed at the science pod, uh, and then the big telescope array on top. 
And personally, I think that finds the nice sweet spot of supporting other ships and being able to accomplish tasks on its own. You gather and process the information gathered in the system from the smaller ships while you use the big ass antenna to find your next jump or just keep scanning that system. After that, another one that I can think of would be a mobile overclocking facility. You could get the super collider uh, and the landing pad, and then you have people bring you their goods to your ship. Um, then you take them to the collider, um, and you become some sort of master tier overclocker, maybe famous in the racing world, or maybe famous in the underground worlds for illegally powerful weapons. You can kind of make your own career out of how you utilize these you know, different modules and pods. Now, I can also see a fun and an illegal setup for this ship, and it's basically the space version of setting up a meth lab in a Winnebago, and that would be having a landing pad, a general research pod, and a set of biodomes. Now you're going to use the domes to grow terrestrial growers, growers like the drug Color, and the research pod to generate some sweet neon, which is like the, the space ecstasy, but either way, you're covered in how you need to grow them or develop them, and you've got the landing pad to send your dealers out, or maybe to allow people to come to your location to pick up these illegal drugs. There's a lot of potential in this ship, and I think we can accomplish a lot of good or a lot of bad, which is always going to have me looking at this ship twice. So let's get down to the should you buy portion of this video, and it's another tough one to really talk about. Overall, I think this is one of the more unique ships out there to purchase, and if you're in a larger organization that needs a flexible flagship for your fleet, then I think the price on this ship, um, especially with its scale and versatility, is actually pretty well priced. For the individual user, it's hard to commit to a ship like this. It's currently listed with a crew size of 16 people, which is a lot of mouths to feed when it comes to payday. Now, can the ship earn you enough money to do that? I think it's going to depend on your overall proficiency and whatever you're trying to accomplish. Now, my concern with this ship mostly circulates around what I'm assuming is a relatively large operating expense and a relatively unknown income source. Now, I'm sure this the income is going to be there, and the level of detail they've put into everything makes me feel much more at ease, but for those relying on NPCs to help them, I don't think this ship um, is the one for you to spend money on, especially considering it doesn't have many defenses of its own. So if you're already expensing NPCs to run this ship, you're going to need some people out there flying escorts as well. But if you're dead set on being something like a farmer in space, um, then by all means, get this as it really is the only one that does it. And with the modularity, you're not stuck farming forever if you end up hating it. Now, if I make this a little bit short, I think it's for the majority of people out there. The ship is too big. It requires too many passengers, and it's going to cost a crap load of money to operate. So for the majority of people, no, it's not the right ship for you. But for those of you that have value flexibility, or for those of you that have a large organization um, to help you with this, or for those of you that want to be a drug kingpin or a hospital ship captain and have a deep enough wallet, then this ship is awesome. Now, I said it early, and I'll say it again, that I think it's one of the more interesting ships that I've seen to this point, and I think it's something that I want, but I'm going to be earning this one in the Persistent Universe and acting as a crew member on some of my organization mates' uh, endeavors who have picked them up. Now, it's also worth noting that we should expect to see other pods released for this ship, and this is just the first wave. You know, things like a defensive pod have been mentioned, um, but I think the sky's really the limit on what we can actually see. So if you have any questions about any of this, please ask. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more content. I appreciate you guys watching. Have yourselves a great day and take care.